Hey guys, Star Watch Media here with Ralph Macchio, the writer director of the short film Across Grace Alley. So Ralph, you made a Funny or Die video, yeah. making fun of yourself about two, three years ago. Yep. And I love that you didn't take the route, which would be starting to do scandalous stuff and drinking. You turned back to the film world and uh, you're at the Hamptons with your short film. So tell me about um, how you started to get back in the loop of things with uh, filmmaking. Well, yeah, I, 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 you know, that scandalous road was, was quite seductive, but uh, I probably would have failed at it. So, um, uh, but thank you for re referencing Wax On Bleep Off, the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, but, you know, that's an element, that's a short, you know, that Funny or Die video is like a short m movie in a way. I mean, it's more conceptual short film trailer, but... Um, in this case, Across Grace Alley was something that was born out of a friendship I developed with Karina Smirnoff, who I danced with on Dancing with the Stars and didn't totally suck at. She's spectacular. and a, uh, But I got to know her on a personal level and as well as my family did. She became friends with my family, uh, sort of an extended family member. And I got to uh, see this element of this girl beneath this dynamic, uh, feisty woman and this very uh, understated, um, uh, sweet person. And it inspired, I th found her fascinating and thought it would be a great medium to explore her as an actress. And that's where the, the concept came from. Um, I've always been uh, uh, intrigued with stories told through the eyes of a child. And I found this beautiful kid, Ben Highland, who plays our, the lead 10-year-old uh, boy. It's a coming-of-age story. And then Marsha Mason plays his grandmother. So it all came together, um, tons of work to try to get these things made. But we're very proud of it. And it, it's, it seems to touch and move people in a, a very poetic kind of way. And uh, um, I've learned a lot over the years from some great filmmakers I got to work with be it Francis Coppola and The Outsiders, John Avelson, Karate Kid, um, Arthur Hiller, Walter Hill, Jonathan Lynn, my cousin Vinny. So I've had a pretty good pedigree of guys I got to watch uh, and, and, and work as an actor uh, under their direction. So you take a little bit of that each time. And even from your, your production designers and, and cinematographers, you... you absorb a lot so it was sort of my film school back then so I, I enjoy taking what I've learned and, and implementing it in my own stuff. Right. Well given that you're working with a 10 year old boy in the film and you know you were acting when you were that age um, and you have worked with some amazing directors what was some of the things that you took from them that you employed uh, directing a child because it's definitely different than um, you know working with adults. Yeah, that's a good. Uh, that's a good question. I certainly was never. Uh, I didn't work as an actor at ten years old. I just looked like I was ten years old. <laughs> I was like seventeen when I started working, but I was playing like thirteen and fourteen. So people think that I was, you know, the the child star from age five. But that's not the case. But I was often the youngest kid on the set, and know how that feels. And um, with with kids, it's you know, it's difficult. Because you pretty much, when they come in and you, you get their audition tape, you pretty much, that's what you're going to get on the day. Um, so you have the ability to, um, to manipulate a little bit more, where if I manipulated, say, Marsha Mason, she probably would say, hey, listen, I'm going, you know, <laughs> get out of here. Who are you talking to? With, with Ben in this film... Um, he, I was asking him to uh, emote emotions and, and things that he has yet to experience in his own life. That, that, so then you have to sort of create what they have experienced and, and draw from draw those parallels, even though it you know there were times you'd be in the moment and playing the actual scene. And there are other times where I'd have to get reactions from him and I would, draw off of what is important for him. There's one moment where he uh, he meets uh, Karina Smirnoff's character for the first time and he's in, innocently infatuated with her and I was trying to get him to be in awe that she's right there. You know, it's like, so I think I, I referenced like, it's like, it's like Babe Ruth and Michael Jordan in one. It's like right in front of you and the kid was just like looking at me like, who? And I felt a hundred years old. And then I'm like, it's like Mickey Mantle and Derek Jeter. He knew who Derek Jeter was, but it was like, you know, Derek Jeter was on his way out. Um, I found, I asked him what his favorite music was, and he was like, it's Flo Rida. I said, okay, it's like Flo Rida and Santa Claus 
you know, right there. And he was like, you know, then I, I sort of got that expression. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny. So that's what I'm talking about with manipulating, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. it's fun. Well, you know, it, there's another film that's out right now, ACOD, about, you know, adult children of divorce. And we are sort of the least parented generation ever. So, you know, your short film comes at a time when I think a lot of people can relate to being a child and going through divorce. Um, so when did that element of the story come in? Was it something you experienced or, you know, why choose um, a child who wants to escape from from that? Yeah, I, th the fact that, um, uh, the, you know, Ben's character is, is a, sort of a broken kid and doesn't know where he's going to wind up and staying with his grandmother for, the, for a brief period of time, which is the setting for the film, that came... I, I, the, the initial ideas for the film came uh, um, uh, the visual sort of rear window element because a lot of it is played through the, what he's viewing across Grace Alley um, and the church elements of the film uh, came from Karina she would take me to light candles at the Russian Orthodox Church before camera blocking every Sunday she's very spiritual and very and so those scenes came first. The saying goodbye through the windows, the, the ending of the movie came first. Then I said, okay, what's the dilemma for the kid? Um, you know, I just had him at his grandmother's house. He didn't want to be there. I said, it has to be a stronger element. So then um, the fact that he was being dumped off there and had, you know, he was, uh, he had, he just didn't fit in. And then through this, you know, through this vision out, his window became his escape. And essentially, you know, w what, you know, uh, is the connection that, that, that is uh, transferred between all three characters, Marsha, Karina's, and Ben's. And so it wasn't a, it wasn't a conscious effort. I'm going to tell a story about a kid going through a divorce. That I sort of backed into that. And that became a very rich um, and... And real world issue that anyone could uh, could connect with. I, it certainly didn't come from my background. My parents are still together today, and uh, I'm, you know it's a rare occasion. I'm, I'm still married, 25 plus years. So that's. Uh, but I know enough of of that and seen enough of that, and uh, and uh, so it deals. The film does. It touches on that. It touches on on uh, unhealthy relationships, it touches on unplanned pregnancy, and uh, all in all in sort of real yet poetic ways and not doesn't bang the drum, you know, bang the nail on the head over and over. Well, it sounds like that you've managed to stay grounded um, through, you know, your friendships, your relationships, you know, your parents, your wife, um, you know, the people you worked with on the movie. So. You know, what is your advice to people who are trying to navigate a crazy industry like the filmmaking industry? You know, how do you, you've really <laughs> braved through with the torch, you know? Uh, it, it's, listen, it's not easy, whether it's in the entertainment business or not. You know, any kind of relationship, any marriage, it's, it's, it's a tremendous amount of work and it, it re requires commitment and the belief that you are with the person you belong to be with, which is the, the foundation of my relationship with my wife and my entire family. So I'm fortunate and blessed to have that. But, you know, you get in, you know, what you put in. You get out what you put in. And, uh, um, uh, I mean, obviously you also have to be with the right person. So I was lucky enough to, to, to find that. Through the industry, it's very difficult to balance this industry and, and, and a relationship. I would venture to say, in my case, the fact that my wife is not in the business is a big part of making it work. Because um, um, it's, it's just too much selfishness if there were two of me. Uh, you know, and staying grounded uh, comes from, you know, my upbringing and just my genuine, genuine sensibilities. Um, but maybe tomorrow I'll do something scandalous. <laughs> well, congratulations on the film. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you.